The diet, exactly. They eat a really tiny shrimp known as quill. You can see it has that pink coloration in it. So the more quill that they eat, the pinker that they get. You can even take a good look at some of our guys here. A few of them are actually up in the tree right now. But you will notice that a couple of them are a deeper, more vibrant pink than others. <laughs> That's just because they like to get to the pool and steal all the good stuff. <laughs> so I certainly can't blame them. Yeah. And then hanging out with the white eyes and all the other ones, you see these other birds that look pretty similar, but they're not completely white or completely pink. Yeah. Instead, they have brown modeled in with those feathers. And these are actually the juveniles. <laughs> so you have two juvenile white eyes right here in front of me, and then we have two juvenile scarlet eyes right over there. You can see that the adult feathers trying to come through. All four of these juveniles were hatched right here in this aviary last summer. So they're not a year old yet. They're teenagers. They're still working on it. <laughs> they're about the right size. But they still have several more months before they have their full adult feathers. Now we also have a few other birds that like to come hang out with us during these seeds. So I am going to do an insect talk here on the beach. Now these bugs, they are alive. But I promise you they are asleep, so we're not so bad again. We'll see if they don't want to come hang out. So we have that beautiful lady with the metallic wings. That is a super starling from Africa. So we actually have another species of starling as well. We have two emerald starlings. They're also from Africa, but they're a little shy. So they don't always come to hang out with us at this time, but that's okay. They're probably up in this tree. And you'll notice they're a little bit smaller than she is. They have a dark plum underbelly and a beautiful emerald colored wings. Now many of you have probably heard about the starling right here in the United States. But as you can tell, these birds are actually very beautiful songbirds. So a lot of people have kept them as pets. And then unfortunately they got out or were released. So they've actually established populations throughout the northeastern United States. But they are not native. We do not have a native in the U.S. And we'll see if one of these guys wants to hang out. It's a little windy, so they may or may not. We'll see if my viewers want to put these little deer cuckoo right over here. So I have my younger pair. They're not as good at the training, so I'm just going to squeeze between you guys and see what they want to do. Here we go. All right, good job, bud. He's still mm -hmm. young and we are loading, but that's okay. What about you, big guy? You're pretty good at this. You want to show off? Here we go. Nope, he fell. <laughs> that's okay. His mate came and got it. That's all right. <laughs> and that's okay. It's a little windy today, I understand. But we do have four of these guys. The two mated pairs. We have our older pair. They're a bit better at catching because they've been with us for quite some time. And then we have the younger pair. They've only been with us for a couple months. So they are still learning. They're also just very young in general. They're less than a year old. So they're picking it up pretty quickly. I'm going to actually do this training with them because they are carnivorous birds. So this mimics their behavior in the wild. They come from South America, where they'd be flying over the field, they would swoop down and pick their prey straight out of the grass. So that's what this behavior actually mimics, and if you like to show those natural behaviors as much as possible. Now, of course, I can go on and on all day about all the different species we have here in this aviary. But I do just like to pause and take a moment to explain why we have an aviary in the first place. This is an aquarium, right? You're going to see fish and dolphins and turtles and alligators and everything in the water. Why would we have an aviary? So birds are actually really, really important to scientists. They are known as an indicator species. But that means that their presence, their absence in an environment, can show scientists a lot about the health of that environment. How do they do that? What do birds do that other animals can't do? Fly. They can fly, exactly. So if you have an environment that does not have clean water for them to drink, that does not have healthy plants so they can make their nests, that doesn't have fish and insects that they can eat, it's going to fly away, right? right? It's going to go someplace better. <laughs> so if you have an environment that has a lot of birds and a lot of different types of birds, it's a really good sign of a healthy active and thriving ecosystem. So that's what these guys represent. They are ambassadors for the wild counterparts. And a reminder that if we want to conserve a fresh water and marine ecosystem, we must conserve our boat species as well. And you guys are helping with this too. And by the end of the day, the cost of mission does go to those conservation efforts that we are involved in. And then learning about these guys, sharing that information with others, it actually goes a really long way. Because if we know better, 
Thank you so much for listening and for putting up with all this with. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.